The Mies Yushchev M50 Bounder was a rare Soviet Air Force four jet engine supersonic strategic bomber prototype conceived to strike against the Americans in case the Cold War escalated. The M50 was equipped with four engines and enough fuel to handle strategic strike capabilities with a range of up to 10,000 kilometers. It was also capable of achieving speeds of almost 2,000 kilometers per hour and was armed with an arsenal of lethal M61 cruise missiles. However, the M50 revealed a lack of understanding of supersonic flight and the rise of intercontinental ballistic missiles and the initial victory to the Soviets during the space race soon became a priority for the Russian industry. Stalin himself approved the development of the Bounder, but it came at a considerable cost. The Arms Race When World War II ended, tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union quickly escalated, and the world was suddenly aligned either with the American capitalists or the Russian communists. During the 1950s, these two superpowers began developing nuclear weapons and aircraft capable of delivering their bomb loads at unimaginable ranges that significantly exceeded expectations. Their militaries kept trying to outdo each other when it came to developing top-tier armament and vehicles, and thus the arms race began. Following the end of the war, the Red Army invested significant resources to catch up with the latest weapon development of the West, and with the help of abducted German scientists and engineers, the Soviets quickly developed their own nuclear bombs and other weapons of mass destruction. One of the earliest priorities was developing supersonic strategic jet bombers that could succeed Soviet aircraft used during the war, as the nation's doctrine during the conflict relied heavily on tactical air support and not strategic bombing. The four-engine bomber Petlyakov PE-8 was only produced in small numbers, and its role was minimal in the fight against the Germans. The Soviet bomber could barely hold its own against the American B-17 or the British short Sterling bombers. Following the first successful Soviet nuclear bomb detonation in 1949, Stalin finally approved the development of a long-range strategic bomber that could deliver nuclear payloads. Intercontinental Bomber Aircraft As the Soviets set out to build a long-range strategic bomber, they realized that they lacked the knowledge of American military engineers and resorted to their spying and copycat abilities for inspiration. Soviet specialists then reverse-engineered several American Boeing B-29 superfortresses that were forced to land in Siberia to develop their own bomber. The Soviet version was called the Tupolev Tu-4 and was designated as Bull by NATO. These preliminary attempts at building effective bombers were beneficial for the Soviet industry. Although they did not hesitate to deliberately steal from American designs, they had plenty of ideas of their own, and the Soviet Air Force soon realized that the Tupolev Tu-4 was just as vulnerable as the B-29. During the Korean War, Soviet MiG-15 jet fighters easily shot down plenty of American B-29s. Hence, the Soviets knew that their version would be just as vulnerable as the American fighters. Then, as the U.S. Air Force began developing the Convair B-58 Hustler bomber in the early 1950s, the Soviet Air Ministry set out to build its own Mach 2 bomber. However, the Soviets were already behind the Westerners when it came to its bomber arsenal, as the United States already had operational Boeing B-47 Stratojets. At the same time, the British were almost done with their advanced Vickers Valiant and the short Sperrin. The concept of supersonic aircraft had taken hold of the global aircraft industry. Journalists and war correspondents continually filled the imaginations of thousands of readers with fantastic visions of aircraft that could effortlessly travel with the speed of sound. But engineers knew the complexity of supersonic capabilities, especially the Soviets. The Soviet Experimental Design Bureau, under the control of Vladimir Mikhailovich Miyashishchev, worked hard to develop an authentic long-range high-altitude bomber. Simply designated DVB-102, this model had only two engines instead of the usual four of most long-range bombers. However, the prototype never made it into production, and Miyashishchev and the Experimental Design Bureau of the Air Force were disbanded. Still, Miyashishchev would not give up, and would ultimately come up with an idea that would translate into a worthy long-range strategic bomber for the Soviet Air Force. Designing Bombers Vladimir Miyashishchev spent several years drafting different concepts for strategic bombers, and one of them finally made it onto Stalin's desk. The dictator himself said, quote, Let's believe Comrade Miyashishchev and entrust him with developing such an aircraft. Miyashishchev was then cleared to develop the bomber and appointed head of the program. The aircraft's requirements 
included that it needed to be powered by four axial flow turbojets with a maximum speed of 850 to 950 kilometers per hour and an approximate range of at least 10,000 kilometers. In addition, its payload capacity, which ranged from nuclear weaponry to standard missiles, needed to be five tons. The specifications were aggressive, but Miyashishchev was committed to the project. After studying numerous designs, Miyashishchev settled for an aircraft with all swept flight surfaces, conventional tail assembly, bicycle landing gear, and two turrets for defensive armament. One manned turret would be placed at the tail, with a remote-controlled one behind the cockpit on top of the airframe. Work on the design began in 1952, and the prototype was finished in early 1953. The aircraft, simply dubbed M4, flew for the first time on January 20th with a crew of seven. In March of 1954, the M4 Bison flew publicly for the first time during the Moscow Parade. NATO officials witnessed the long-range bomber and classified it with the codename Malot. Although the aircraft did not break any records, it earned Miyashishchev the commission to develop another bomber capable of striking the United States and returning to the Soviet Union. This bomber was codenamed M50. The M50 Miyashishchev Bounder the M-50's airframe resembled an enlarged Mikoyan Guryevich MiG-21. It comprised a slender fuselage with a delta wing mounted in the middle, and a circular cross-section with a bulge that ran all the way to the spine and fuel lines. Most of the fuel was stored in the fuselage. It was transferred between the aft tanks to counter-trim charges as the M-50 altered between subsonic and supersonic speeds. The wings had a triangular design and had a wingspan of 25 meters. No fuel was stored in them as they were extremely thin. A pylon-mounted engine was placed under each wing near the wingtips, and a second one was mounted at the tip of each wing. The wings contained rectangular, double-slotted flaps and outboard ailerons. When the M50 landed, the ailerons dropped down to drastically reduce the aircraft's speed. The weapons bay was large enough to carry M61 cruise missiles, which were 11 meters long. Overall, the M50 itself was 58 meters long and 8.25 meters tall. The bomber weighed 78,860 kilograms when empty. Fully loaded with a bomb load of 5,000 kilograms, its weight increased to 145,000 kilograms. Its approximate ceiling was 14,000 meters, with an estimated range of 13,000 kilometers, plus the increased range of the M61 missiles. Its top speed was 1,960 kilometers per hour, or Mach 1.84. The two-man crew would sit at the nose of the M50 in a tandem configuration, and each man had access to downward ejection seats. Entry and exit were done through the bottom hatch, located at the bottom of each seat. Both men had to wear pressure suits as the aircraft was designed to fly at high altitudes. Fate Construction of the M-50 bomber began in the first months of 1956. Later in development, four non-afterburning Dobrynin VD-7BA turbojets of 95.61 kN were added to bolster speed. During testing, the design team encountered unforeseen problems, such as deformation of the thin wings during high speeds and stability problems at supersonic flights. In October of 1958, the aircraft was sent to the Zhukovsky Flight Test Center. After several tweaks, the M-50 took to the skies again on October 27, 1959, with pilots A.S. Lipko and Kikola Goryanov at the controls. The first tests were conducted successfully, but on May 12, 1960, the M-50 collided with a 3ME bomber prototype. The aircraft was then grounded and repaired two months later. Engines were replaced to bolster speed, but supersonic strength was insufficient. After adding weight due to several modifications, the maximum speed did not go past 1,100 kilometers per hour. Even worse, fully loaded, the M50 could only attain a range of 3,500 kilometers out of the expected 9,000. Still, the aircraft was able to attract the attention of NATO forces when it was displayed at the Moscow Air Show. The Westerners classified the aircraft as Bounder, in reference to something that's trying to present itself as above its station. This was the last flight of the M-50 before it was replaced by an improved version called M-52. The new model featured a three-man crew, twin-tail machine guns, and provisions of additional cruise missiles under the wings. But the end of the strategic bombers was just around the corner. With the increasing importance of intercontinental ballistic missiles, long-range strategic bombers suddenly became obsolete. Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev then cancelled all programs related to bombers to focus on the development of these missiles and the Soviet space program. The Miyashishchev company then closed its doors in 1960 
and its personnel was assigned to other programs. The M50 prototype was initially parked at the Romanskoye Airport in Zhukovsky, but it was later relocated to the Central Air Force Museum in Monino, where it can be found today. The Bounder is still remembered as a costly failure that revealed the Soviet's scarce understanding of supersonic flight. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe to our Duck Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the Miyashishchev M50 strategic bomber. Did the Soviets have a chance to compete against the American bomber designs of the early Cold War era?